Mr. President, allow me at the outset to thank you for your decision to personally preside over this meeting and to express our appreciation to the ministers who are taking part in this open debate. Allow me also to thank the briefer, Mr. Thor Wensland, and through him, the United Nations, as our organization continues trying to uphold its sacred mandate, despite repeated Israeli attacks against the UN, its Secretary General, and its personnel. Mr. President, in the words of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, and I quote, the darkest moment of the Gaza conflict is unfolding in the north of the Strip, where the Israelis' military is effectively subjugating an entire population to bombing, siege, and risk of starvation. The Israeli government's policies and practices in northern Gaza risk emptying the area of all Palestinians. We are facing what could amount to atrocity, crimes, including potentially extending to crimes against humanity, end of quotation. The acting Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs concluded on her part in the, General, in the Security Council recently, and I quote, the entire population of North Gaza is at risk of dying. End of quotation. Take a moment to grasp what that means. The entire population of North Gaza is at risk of dying. Hundreds of thousands of Palestinians are at risk of imminent death, faced with the death penalty for refusing to leave their land. I sat in the Security Council week after week, stood before the General Assembly week after week, hoping to be able to tell my people that help is on the way. They endured horrors that you watch on your TV screens and yet can barely comprehend, but their tormentors continue to be shielded and Palestinian victims continue to be abandoned. There is a lot of solidarity and empathy in this council and in these halls and around the world. Many countries are taking bold initiatives for justice to prevail and we are grateful to all of them. But as we barely scratch the surface of ending Israeli's impunity. Israel continues co committing crimes after crime, defying every rule and all states assembled in these United Nations, betting that its, w its will to kill and colonize will outweigh the collective will of the international community to save lives and achieve freedom and peace. Palestinians are besieged, bombed and starved, blamed for being killed. They have nowhere to go, and they know that if they leave, they will not be allowed to return. Israel denies that it is implementing the very plan you see it deploying before your eyes. It is outraged to be accused of crimes it has already confessed to. Israel wants to rewrite international law to consider that indiscriminate killing, targeting of civilians, including humanitarians and doctors and journalists, starvation as a method of war, arbitrary detention, abductions and torture, willfully causing great suffering or serious injury 
to body and health wanton destruction, forcible displacement and colonizations are all legal as long as they are committed by Israel. They are barbaric only if committed by others. Israel is inventing a law that adapts to and changes with the identity of the victims and the identity of the perpetrators. A racist, supremacist, inhumane law. Will you allow Israel to dehumanize us further as part of its attempt to erase us. Will you? Will Israel succeed in making the destruction of the Palestinian people, starting with northern Gaza, acceptable to you? Or at least convince you it is inevitable and there is nothing you can do about it? There is a lot you can do. The Palestinian people did not surrender, neither should you. I said that more than one time. I repeat it, neither you. Mr. President, the ICJ delivered provisional orders considering that there is a real and imminent risk that ir irreparable uh, prejudice will be caused to the rights found by the court to be plausible, including the right of the Palestinians in Gaza to be protected from acts of genocide and rela related prohibited acts identified in Article 2, Article 3 of the Genocide Convention. Instead of abiding by these orders, Israel did not only breach them, it obliterated them, doubling down on its genocide. What was a real and imminent risk 10 months ago has become an undeniable reality today. Are states willing now to finally denounce this genocide, especially given Israeli crimes in northern Gaza? Are they willing to act accordingly? If not now, when? Once there are no more lives to save? Mr. President, Israel understands that to be able to pursue its genocidal and colonial campaign, it needs to dismantle the international law-based order or to carve an Israeli exception within it. It understands that the UN, its representatives and agencies, as well as the ICJ, the ICC, the humanitarian community, the journalists are all obstacles on the way. It is an, it is no coincidence that this is the conflict with, with the most UN staff, humanitarians and journalists killed. It is no coincidence that Israel has made outrageous accusations and led unprecedented attacks against the UN, the courts, the humanitarian and media organization in an attempt to intimidate and silence them. To better besiege the Palestinians, it needs to neutralize those who may provide them with help, those who could shed a light over the crimes against them, and those who may hold accountable those responsible. Israel is thus currently at war with the UN, with you all declaring the Secretary General persona non grata, killing and maiming and detaining and torturing UN staff in the hundreds, attacking UN peacekeepers, including this morning in southern Lebanon, and striving to dismantle a UN agency on road. 
The legislation passed yesterday to destroy UNRWA's ability to serve Palestine refugees, but also its ability to help the Palestinian civilian population in Gaza survive, constitutes a new level in this war against the UN and an integral part of the all-out assault on the Palestinian people and their presence in their land, in their homeland. The entire world rose to the defense of UNRWA. The coalition to defend UNRWA at the UN is beyond 124 or 124, uh, 25 member states in the last few months. Recognizing its vital role in providing life-saving assistance to generations of Palestinian refugees insisting it is the backbone of the humanitarian response in Gaza and emphasizing its role as a pillar of regional stability and a, and a lifeline of hope. Yesterday, countries around the world responded to the Israelis' legislation with statements of condemnation and outrage. And yet, Israel still sits among us and utilizes its seat to incite against the UN here. And, in, and an incitement that translates in attacks and killing and maiming of UN personnel and the bombing of UN shelters and facilities there. When will the condemnations lead to action and accountability? When? Israel is waiting to see the international response to its actions, and in the absence of deterrence, Israel will move on to the next chapter of its crimes. The genocide is only possible because of impunity. Genocide is only possible because of impunity. Israel has crossed every red line broke every rule, defied every prohibition. When is enough really enough? When are you going to act? Mr. President, this seat where I sit, where I am sitting, belongs to the Palestinian people. This seat where I'm sitting behind the state of Palestine belongs to the Palestinian people, to every one of the millions of Palestinians. The Palestinian people who are besieged, bombed, and starved as we speak. 40,000, 43,000 have been killed by Israel and are accounted for. Many more are unaccounted for under the rubbles, buried under the rubble and in mass graves. 100,000 Palestinians have been maimed, many of them enduring permanent disabilities or amputations. Two million are displaced Entire communities endure successive attacks by occupation forces and Israeli settlers. Thousands of prisoners are arbitrarily detained, brutally assaulted, some raped, others killed while in detention, and there is still now no end in sight for their agony. We salute them from this chamber. They are the bravest among us. When council members speak, they should address them, all of them, every single Palestinian. Not me. I will vacate this seat now with one last message. This seat is not empty. It is filled with people enduring unspeakable pain that cannot reach you. You have to reach them. 
You are the Security Council. You have to reach every single person who is in pain among the Palestinians. That is your duty. Reach the child who, after being amputated and having lost his parents, finds himself in a tent still under the bombs and with nothing to eat. The mother who still talks to her little child, imagining he could still be alive after months under the rubble. The father who left to find food for his family only to return to find them all killed. Talk to them. Tell them what you intend to do. Tell them what you intend to do. Or tell them they are left alone to die. Honor the memory of those killed and save those who can still be saved by deciding on an immediate and unconditional ceasefire and the provision of life saving assistance while all efforts continue to ensure implementation of this council's resolutions. By ending impunity and ensuring accountability, by finally bringing to an end this terrible injustice, let your actions match your words. Stop this genocide or forever remain silent. Thank you, Mr. President.